Hey everyone, by the time you're watching this video, Phase 5 should either be out already or close to releasing, depending on which region you're playing on. Blizzard announced that just like for every previous phase of TBC, Phase 5 will release with all the rest of the content available and then the raid, Sunwell Plateau, will release a couple days later. But anyways, while we wait and even after the raid releases, we can enjoy all the content that Phase 5 brings with it. From dailies to new cosmetic items to gold making opportunities, today we're gonna discuss five things you can and should be doing the moment phase 5 drops to help you and your guild in your progress through Sunwa Plateau or even to prepare for Wrath of the Lich King. So without further ado, let's get into it. First and foremost, we already talked about this previously, but the first thing you'll need to be doing with the help of your whole server is to unlock the entirety of the Isle of Keldanas. Keldanas has its own progression system. Think of it as a mini war effort, but you're not fighting Kiraji bugs, but loyalists of Kelthas who are trying to summon Keljaden back into Azeroth. And the way you fight those guys back and thus claim key areas of the island is by doing dailies. A lot of dailies. You can check your server's progress towards unlocking the next area by clicking on the quest givers. They will tell you the percentage towards that. In an ideal world, you want to have your server unlock the entirety of the isle before Sunwell releases. The reason for this is because there's some very important vendors or even world buffs to unlock in the isle. You got the blacksmith Hothra which sells super strong badge gear, the jewel crafter Shani who sells epic gems for badges, but also the Naru Kiru who gives the permanent world buff Kiru Song of Victory. 79 stamina and 40 intellect. And this will come in very handy for your progression on Sunwell. So yeah, really, your first goal as a server is to unlock the whole island, and ideally doing that before Sunwell releases, because that will not only help you and your own guild, but it will help everyone on your server progress through the raid more smoothly. So make sure to not miss a single daily every day. Speaking of dailies, the other reason you want to be doing them every day is to unlock some powerful gear and recipes from the reputation vendor. Most notably here, you have these shattered neck pieces. There's one for every roll and if you're still rocking something from phase 1 or phase 2, this is probably an upgrade for you. You also have some very nice shield at Exalted, but most importantly, you have the recipes. A lot of jewel crafting stuff here, but the one that catches the eye is this trinket, which is straight up a buffed version of Bloodlust Bruch. If you've been super unlucky like me with trinkets, this is yet another reason to consider going jewel crafting, on top of the best in slot neck recipe from Sunwell Trash. And then of course you have Void Shadow which will finally bring the price of large prismatic shards down by transforming one void crystal into two large prismatic shards, which have been historically throughout the expansion very high in price in comparison to void crystals. This should bring some much needed balance to those prices. Of course, other than reputation, the other reason you want to be doing dailies every day is for gold. We're still not sure exactly how much gold a full run of dailies gives, simply because on the PTR not everything has been unlocked yet. But based Based on the currently unlocked dailies, I'd say it's upwards in the 300 plus gold per day that you can make in just about an hour of your time. Because it's not just the isle itself that contains dailies in phase 5, but there's also dailies added all around Outland. You pick most of them from Shathrat, but there's even one you can do in Throne of Kel'jaeden. And we will be doing a gold making video involving doing a full week of dailies and looking at the average gold you can make from it per day and how you can optimize your time similar to how we did in phase 3, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. However, an unfortunate but inevitable reality of doing so many dailies is that this will create a big inflation ahead of Wrath of the Lich King. Everyone on your server will be doing these dailies, injecting a lot of gold into the economy and inevitably lowering the value of gold. Thankfully, Wrath will quickly rectify that with how many gold sinks it has, but definitely you need as much gold as possible going into Wrath. Moving on, here's something we're not sure about when it releases exactly, the Dungeon Magister's Terrace. Blizzard gave no word on whether this will be releasing along with Sunwell or on the 10th when the phase drops. Either way, if you're watching this video, it's probably already released on your server. So here's some reasons you want to be doing this dungeon every time you get the chance. First off, the gear, obviously. Magister's Terrace has a lot of very strong pieces of gear that will not only help you and your alts catch up with 
everyone else, but that may even be better than what you currently have, even if you've been raiding every week. The most famous example is the Shard of Contempt, a very very solid trinket for melee DPS. This is even best for enhancement shamans according to Wowhead, but just be careful not to go over your expertise cap as a rogue though. Not sure if that's an issue for arms or fury warriors. Other than that, if you're a healer, I don't think there's anything of interest you can get from this dungeon, but there are a few pieces for caster DPS, so just have a look on your bis list and make a few rounds of Magister's Terrors to make sure you have everything. The other reason you want to be doing this dungeon is of course for the mount, the swift white hawk strider. This actually isn't as rare as other boss mounts in the game. It has a 4% drop chance according to Wobhead. It looks quite gorgeous and it's the only way you can get a hawk strider for alliance for a while, so it will be a very unique mount to have. Finally, in Magister's Terrace, you have the Orb of the Sindore, a toy that transforms you into a Blood Elf for 5 minutes on a 30 minute cooldown. The nice thing about this is this isn't a trinket that you equip like every old toy from vanilla we had. This is an actual item that you click in your bags, so that's a big plus. Let's end the video by talking about a few PvP pieces that you want even for PvE. Unfortunately, unlike Season 3, Season 4's off pieces aren't as good for PvE. So unlike Phase 3, you don't need to worry about farming BGs if you're only after PvE content. However, just like in Season 3, Season 4 weapons are still very strong for some classes in PvE. Most notably for Enhancement Shamans. Your best weapons come from Sunwell of course, but outside of that, dual wielding the Season 4 axes is going to be your next best option. Those however do have a rating requirement. That being said, if pushing your arena rating isn't your cup of tea, the Season 3 weapons are still great and they don't have any rating requirements and cost way less arena points from now on. So those are some very easy but very solid entry level weapons to get as an enhancement shaman. Also, if you're looking to get into PvP on an alt or even on your main, or just dabble with it from time to time, as we speculated on our previous video, Blizzard did add the option to exchange tier 6 tokens for season 3 arena gear. And that set is gonna be a very solid set to get into season 4 arena with. So just like we said in our previous video, start rolling on tier 6 tokens if you've completed your set to move on to getting some PvP pieces ahead of season 4. And that's about everything I have for you today. I'm sure I'm forgetting some things here, so if you can think of some important stuff to do in phase 5, make sure to drop it in the comments to help your fellow Classic WoW players. One thing is for sure, phase 5 is gonna be a lot of fun and I can't wait to see who wins world first, because Sunwell is definitely gonna have a lot of guilds wiping on a few bosses. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic WoW Curios channel for more content like this. My name is Numidia and I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Bye for now.